Welcome back once again to Tuesday Afternoon Kitchen, where we'll be delving into the issues that matter most to you. And with me, as always, is my trusted friend and colleague, Mr. Rupert Sebastius Smythe. How are we today, Rupert? Oh, that's very nice of you, Simon. And of course, the feeling is mutual. Uh, I'm very good. I'm very, very good indeed. Good. Good to hear. Excellent. So coming up on the show today, we'll be asking the question, are TV shows about space too complicated for people to understand? Huh. Some interesting viewpoints from people on that topic. And of course, we'll be celebrating National Men Who Don't Drive Day a day where we honour those men who have chosen not to drive for whatever reason. We'll be opening up the phones to hear from people with some interesting opinions on the subject. It's a cause very close to your heart, Rupert, isn't it? Yes, now when I first heard about it, Sam, I thought it was a, a bit of a wind-up, a bit of a, a put-on. But, you know, this thing is actually a real thing. Yeah, because you're famously a, a non-driver these days. Yes, I am a non-driver since that accident with the cyclist last year. Yes, yes, of course. And you're, you're happier as a non-driver now than you ever were as a driver. Yes, that's right. Let me tell you, Simon, there are two types of people in this life. There are those who drive and there are those who are driven. I fall into the latter category nowadays. Right. Well, I mean, there is, of course, the argument that people who don't drive are fundamentally lazy. No. So, anyway, yeah. uh, if you're a non-driver, or a driver, or even someone who's on the fence, we'd love to hear from you today. Oh, that'll be nice. Mm, won't it, Jest? Uh, we'll also be cooking up a storm with Tuesday Afternoon Kitchen's resident chef, Barry Basminder, who'll be treating oh, us uh, to a delicious British Bangladeshi classic tuna boona. Um, how's it going over there, Barry? Uh, good afternoon, guys. Yeah, really good. Actually, you're in for an absolute treat today with my world famous, my family love it, the tuna boona. Uh, yeah. Lovely stuff, Barry. Uh, now, now tell us, are, are you a driver? Uh, do you drive? Of course I drive. <laughs> Who doesn't drive these days? <laughs> well, yeah. well, I mean, well, Rupert is, is part of an increasing movement uh, of men who, and, and women, of course, who made the decision to not drive. It's becoming something of a thing. Uh, be no good for me, guys. You know what one of my favourite things is to do? Go on, Barry. Well, I like to take a little drive down to my local country pub in my much-loved Triumph Stag. Nice. You know, nice little chat with the regulars, um, nice ploughmans, five or six pints, you know, nothing excessive. And then a lovely drive home, down the M4, 80s music's blaring out, bang, 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 bang. <laughs> you know what I mean? I love it. I like to do it every Sunday if I can, you know. Very nice too, Barry. Yeah. So you, you drive home after five or six pints? No, I don't. What? So what's the question? So it's, it's probably best to get a cab home after, after six pints, wouldn't you say, Barry? Yeah. Um, yeah, of course. I mean, I don't really, really drive these days, to be honest. I don't, don't even drink that much, to be honest, anymore. You know, you know what? I might even get rid of the 25-year-old classic car because I don't need it. I'm, you know what? Stop drinking. I'm not even going to go back to the pub. I've only been going there 20 years, so it's not... You know what, Barry? It, it, it sounds to me like you could learn a thing or two from the national... Men who don't drive, dear old boy. No, oh, I think you're right. Um, yes. you know, I'm quite happy to put out a tweet, get my agent Simon on it, if you can you know, do something. I don't know. You know I mean, I'll go naked in the bush, guns myself, whatever I need to do, I'll do it, yeah? So, what camera? Yeah, cheers. So, whilst Barry <clears> gets <throat> on with our dish of the day, let's hear from Tom from Camden, who's on the line. Go ahead, Tom. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me on. All right, Tom. Now, what, what's... What's your standpoint on this? Are you a yay or a nay? Sorry? Are you a non-driver or a driver? Well, I must say, I'm a non-driver. Oh, marvellous! <laughs> yeah, but it's not always been an easy ride, if you'll pardon the pun. No, no, of course. Uh, so can you tell us more about your experiences as a non-driver? Well, I mean, I get a lot of stick from people. My wife, mainly. She's a driver has been since she was 19. She says that it's only freaks and misfits who don't drive. But, but you're not a freak or a misfit, are you, Tom? Well, I don't like to think so. It's amazing that some people still have this, this attitude towards non-drivers. I mean, it's 2020, for God's sake. Well, this is it. I mean, only last week we were out for dinner with some friends and we got to the end of the meal and the wife had said to me in front of everyone, bold as brass, she said, you're almost 50, Tom. Why don't you drive, you sad bastard? Ah, right, now, can we just 
watch the language, Tom. <clears throat> There's no swearing on the show at, at all, actually. Uh, I was hoping the lady who put you through might have mentioned that. Oh, sorry, I didn't realise. No, it's fine. Uh, uh, can we just make sure that the, the callers are alerted to the non-swearing policy on the show? Sorry, Tom. Um, so, so what happened after your wife said such unkind words and in front of close friends too? Oh, she does what she always does. She drove off in our car and left me to get a taxi home. Oh, the heartless car. What a rotten thing to do, Tom. Now, now tell me, is, is, is your wife domineering in other areas of your relationship? Well, I mean, she sometimes makes me dress up as a driving instructor in the bedroom, which, as a non-driver, I find quite offensive. Does she now? OK, um, so we've we got, we got to learn to be a bit more tolerant to non-drivers generally mm. as, as a society, don't we? Well, yeah, I mean, her being a driver and me being a non-driver has led to lots of resentment in our marriage, if I'm honest. In, in, in what way, Tom? Well, I mean, a few months back, we'd saved up to go on a nice walking holiday in the Peak District. Oh, a, a walking holiday, of course. Well, then two days before we're due to go, a brand new car's appeared in the drive. I thought to myself, hang on, where's that come from? Oh, no. She didn't buy the car with the holiday money, did she? Got it in one, Simon. Well, I don't mind telling you, I was bloody livid. Well, yeah, no, I can imagine. I bet you were, old boy. I mean, I, I imagine you didn't, didn't take that one lying down. What did you do? Well, I waited for her to have a few glasses of wine one night. Then I suggested she sit in the driver's seat of her new car while I take a few pictures, you know, revving the engine and looking pleased with herself. OK, go on, Tom. Then I told her I needed to get something from inside. So I popped into the house, phoned the police and told them there was a drunk driver outside my house. Good Lord. And, and then? Well, they were around hours in no time. The station's only up the road, and they arrested her for drink driving, of course. God! Yeah, she got a 12-month driving ban and 200 hours community service. Well, some might say that you were driven to it, Tom. Poor you. But tell me something. Did you ever manage that walking holiday in the end? No, I did, actually. I went away with a few of my non-driving friends. We had a lovely time. <laughs> That's the ticket! <laughs> Well, thank you for your call today, Tom. We appreciate you being so honest. Can't have been easy. Oh, no problem. Happy National Men Who Don't Drive Day, everyone. Bye. Yeah, and the very same to you, Tom. There's some people having a very tough time up there, wouldn't you say, Rupert? Yes, it's a tough old world out there, Simon, and that's for sure. Well, let's try and lighten the mood and see how that tuna booner is coming along, shall we? I don't know about you, but I am starving. Yes, let's... Ah, you're just in time, fellas. She's, he's, it's ready to rock. Right, so it's, um, it smells, um, interesting, Barry. I mean, I, I, I actually missed breakfast, so I'm genuinely quite hungry. Yeah, so, uh, no, I've, I've, I've never had a tuna, can I have a spoon, Barry? I'm sorry. I've never, I've, I've never had a tuna booner, Barry, but I, I would imagine it's the same as a, as a lamb booner. But with, uh, with tuna, tuna in it, yeah. Yes, yeah, wonderful, yeah. wonderful. And this is, this, is, this is a dish that you cook often, is it, Barry? Uh, when I can, Rupert. You know, it's mixed reactions, to be honest, but uh, my family love it. It's a personal favourite of mine. Um, and it helps me to stay true to my adoptive parents' roots, you know, as, you, as I say always, and Sikhs and uh, originally from Bangladesh, of course, so. Wonderful stuff. And, and, and have, you, have you spent much time in Bangladesh? Me? Uh, spiritually, yeah. Physically, no, um, to be honest. But I hear it's lovely, though. My wife prefers Benidorm, you know. Cheap booze in it. Ah! <laughs> shouldn't say. <laughs> it's a curious taste, isn't it? Yes. It's, it's something unexpected, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's got, it's got so much character. You know, I'm a big fan of the booze myself. Yes, I'm, I'm a fan of the Boona Barry. I'm, I'm just, uh... Hey, Dawn, hit me. What's your verdict? Well, I'm just going to come right out and say it. <laughs> I don't like it. I mean, neither. <coughs> Seriously? <laughs> What's the answer like? It's got the tomato sauce in it, you know, not the cheap one either. Uh, the turmeric and obviously the tuna. I, d I don't know why you don't like it. Would you like me to be frank, Barry? Yeah, go on. 
It's unpleasant. Yeah, yeah, I'd have to agree with that. It's extraordinarily unpleasant. It's, 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 it's like someone has taken the contents of a food recycling bin and emptied it into a mixer and pressed the go button. It, it, it's like a lot of revolting flavours all combined into some horror film of a dish. It's, 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 it's pungent, it's ill-formed, it's, it's rank, and it's even... <laughs> rancid. <laughs> it's rough, Barry. It's rough. It's, it's like rats have got into a tin of chum dog food. It's upsetting. It's a culinary punishment. Don't hold back, Rupert. I, I hope I haven't upset you there, Barry. Joe, you know, I, I, I've got to say, I really wish I hadn't eaten that now. I mean, that's really not your best work, Barry, mate. Really not at all. I mean, if you, if you actually put this in a recipe book... <sighs> I can't believe that like it. Better luck next time, Barry, old boy. Right, Rupert, come on. <laughs> Let's, uh, look, um, sorry, everybody. Um, I do apologise to all the viewers at home. We were, we were hoping for a classic take on a British Bangladeshi <laughs> cuisine there, but uh, that was just, um, well, it was just awful. Um, anyway, onwards and upwards, as they say. Um, do we have any drinks of the soft variety today? Ah, uh, uh, um, unfortunately not. How come? Well, the, the delivery containing today's drinks didn't arrive. No explanation, nothing. The, the delivery just didn't happen. What, it just didn't, it didn't turn up? No call, no message Nothing, no words, nothing, nothing. Right, okay. All right, I've had enough of this now, to be honest. Uh, th this has happened way too many times for my liking. I've, so if anyone at home is thinking about using debris of Lancashire haulage and delivery services, my advice is to not, actually. They're unreliable and, frankly, dishonest. That's Dewbreeze of Lancashire. What an absolute shower, eh, Rupert? Yes, I can't help but, uh, but agree with you there. I mean, with, with something this important, you can't muck around, can you? I mean, I think we need to look for a new supplier. Yeah, yeah. Can we get a new supplier in time for the next show? I mean, I, I, mean, I can't believe I'm actually having to resort to this on air. Unbelievable. <coughs> anyway, time to move on. So today we wait to the news that everyone's favourite scientist, Professor Brian Cox, is back with a new series. To the moon and then some comes to our screens this evening. I, oh, good. I, I, I do love his programmes. Good. OK. Well, so do I. But unfortunately, they're not for everyone's taste. The Ombudsman has received several complaints from viewers who say that these programmes are overly complicated. So today we ask the question, are TV shows about space too complicated for some people to understand. Too complicated, dear me. I mean, whatever next, what, what is it with people these days? I mean, it's, it seems to become rather trendy not to understand things or, or to have to th have things repeated a thousand times. I mean, it's, it's not rocket science, is it? Well, well I mean, it is, it is sometimes. No, it's, you know what I mean, Simon. Don't be so pedantic. Right, <laughs> OK, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, well, um, right on, Rupert. So we're, we're going to hear now from Terry uh, from Ilford on the phone. Go, go ahead, Terry. Call me Tell, Simon. All my pals call me Tell. Right, of course. Sorry. Go ahead, Tell. I think TV shows about space and all that are just too complicated for people to understand. It's just a waste of a licence fee, isn't it? How, 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 how do you mean, Tell? Well, I mean, it comes on, and I don't like to turn it off when the kids are in the room. But, you know, it can be a bit intimidating, can't it? I mean, I don't know what he's on about. I mean, I'm a pretty chilled-out fella, but when he starts banging on about the bloody space-time continuing or how important it is that we all have a look at the Milky Way or whatever, you have to think, hang on a minute, is he having a pop at me? Is he having a go at me? Ah, uh, yes. Well, I, 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 I really don't think that you can take uh, uh, space exploration personally, Tell. Now, tell me, Tell. What does space mean to you? Space? Well, it don't mean nothing to me, mate. It's just the sky at night, isn't it? It's grey during the day and black at night. Everyone knows there's nothing there, don't they? All this rubbish about spaceships and planets and stuff, it's just a big hoax, isn't it? I mean, all that space bollocks, it's just for the poofs and the bods, isn't it? No offence. Uh, uh, none, none, none taken, Tell. Uh, but there are planets out there and there are stars and there's even an international space station, and there's evidence of this. Oh, not you and all. 
I had you pecked as a sensible fella, but you're just as bad as all them science buds. Why don't you stick to the orange squash, mate? Yeah. But, but, Terry. It's Tell. Tell. Sorry, Tell. Tell. Uh, there are, there are thousands, <clears throat> thousands of books and websites about space and the planets and the stars and the galaxies. You've just got to take the time to educate yourself. Well, I am having it, all right, mate? Yeah, I ain't having it. All right. Well, yeah, he's, uh... <laughs> he's, he's going to take some persuading, isn't he? I don't think I can take uh, any more on this subject. It's actually, it's actually getting me down a bit now. Coming up in the programme, we're going to be hearing from Tuesday Afternoon Kitchen travel correspondent Chaz Chastity with his top tips for travelling after Brexit this summer. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, should we switch back to uh, National Men Who Don't Drive Day? It's, uh, it's marginally less ridiculous than the space conversation, isn't it? Yes, although, although I, I actually don't think it's our responsibility to educate the public on, on, on things like space. I think that's up to the government, and it, it, it should start in the schools. I mean, what are we dealing with here? A, a, a generation of people who don't believe in a world beyond our own? I, I mean, whatever next? P people from the Midlands uh, refusing to believe in the sea? Well, that's a, that's a good point. Well made, Rupert. It's, mm. uh, it's not down to us at all, is it? <sighs> I feel like people are calling up and whoever is answering is just putting them straight through to us live on the show without checking who they are or what they're calling about. I mean, that is what is actually happening, isn't it? It, it would rather seem that way, Simon. Although, at least this time around, I haven't had any awkward questions. I think now is the perfect time to hear from Chaz Chastity, our very own in-house travel correspondent, who's got some top tips for travelling after Brexit. Over to you, Chaz. Well, I'm sure as a nation we can all breathe a huge sigh of relief now that Brexit is finally over. And here are my top tips for surviving your holiday in Europe this summer, or anywhere else in the world for that matter. You simply won't be able to get a decent cup of tea when you're abroad. Take it from me, it can't be done. And don't think you can bring your own tea bags either, because there's something in the water over here that ruins it. You can try drinking coffee, but that can be very hit and miss, depending on where you go. My advice is to stick to beer and cocktails. I mean, you're on holiday after all, aren't you? Anyway, all right, yeah, bye, bye. Using your phone abroad can be very expensive. My advice is to leave it at home. There are plenty of internet cafes, and if you do need to use a phone, there are lots of these trusty old phone boxes because telecommunications over here are years behind our trusty British telecommunications systems at home. Or you can ask to use somebody's phone in their home. Our reputation here is excellent, so they probably won't mind. In fact, they probably welcome the intrusion. I don't sell gravy or marmite or proper white bread or sausages when you're abroad. So you're gonna to need to bring that with you. Otherwise, you're gonna end up eating this foreign muck and don't come crying to me when you get food poisoning, cause you will. Put your English food in a container and then put it in your case. The natural cold of the plane will keep it fresh. Wrap the container in some of that Union Jack gaffer tape you can get on Facebook. And then that way, if it gets lost, the airport staff know where to send it. Back to good old Blighty. Hotel tap water abroad is poisonous, especially to us Brits. Apparently, the colonial powers that be made all foreign tap water poisonous after we'd scarp up with all the loot. And don't listen to hotel staff that tell you the tap water is safe to drink. It will poison the living daylights out of you. When you arrive, stuck up on plenty of bottled water. I once had a friend who died after a three-day booze binge because he drank the tap water the next morning. Don't become a statistic, for God's sake. Hotel safes are installed by dodgy foreign hotel managers to scam us decent, honest British folk out of our hard-earned cash and belongings. You might meet a nice chatty hotel manager, but they're all in on it, trust me. And don't listen to their restaurant recommendations either. 
If you put something in a hotel safe, the bellboy will come into your room while you're asleep and you will be robbed. Better still, get yourself a nice sturdy backpack and a rape alarm. Better to be safe than sorry. So there we have it, my top tips for surviving on holiday abroad this summer and getting back to Blighty in one piece. As I say over here, shut up your face and I'll see you next time. Chad's there with his top tips for travelling abroad after Brexit. I can't help but think that perhaps he's not the biggest fan of going on holiday. No, and as a travel correspondent, that's perhaps not the best of qualities to have. No, still, an informative piece there from Chaz. He's nothing if not honest. I wonder where he'll be off to next time. Who knows? And quite frankly, who cares? Absolutely. So that's all we've got time for this week. We'll be back next week for more of the same. But until then, take good care of yourselves and those around you. Bye for now.